90% of consumers read online reviews before visiting a business. What do people see when they look you up online? We give you the tools you need to take control of your reputation. Send surveys to your customers via text message with Testimonial Collector. Get five-star reviews on all the major platforms like Google, Yelp, and more. Track what people are saying about your business with Reputation Manager. Respond to comments and turn negative reviews into happy customers. See what your competitors' customers are saying about them with Competition Tracker. Learn great marketing tactics and what it takes to stay on top. A bigger social presence means more connections. Automatically generate and schedule engaging social media posts with Social 365. Build trust, boost sales, and grow your business. watching the downloads on the podcast you guys amaze me because that means you like my guests i am watching those downloads man watching those downloads on the podcast and especially you guys on spotify and iheart i just love you guys because let me tell you you must really like the people i bring on the show or you like me whichever i'm just grateful welcome to another day in the life of an entrepreneur i am rose your host of the entrepreneur life show where we bring thought-provoking entertaining conversations and guests on the show that you're going to love and enjoy that are useful for you that you can connect with as well as maybe this is something that you've always been interested in doing and you thought you were alone and you know we all have our transitions and our journeys so make sure that you guys subscribe go to the website entrepreneurlifeshow.com you'll be able to see all the past interviews or you can see the schedule lineup for all the upcoming shows. So if you have missed a segment, you can always go back to the website and just locate on whatever platform you're streaming live on, on your social platform, or maybe you are downloading on one of your favorite mini podcast app. Just scroll to the bottom, click on it, and it'll take you right to wherever you listen or watch on. So let me get the housekeeping out of the way. I always want to thank Marketing Off The Box, Sean Maddox. So if you want more customers, go to IWantMoreCustomersNow.com with Sean Maddox, who really helps me in my show. And uh, okay, so um, I have some giveaways. I want to get that away really quick. I do still have a few CDs left. So somebody just asked me earlier today if I had some CDs left of actually the, um, the journalist ballads that I have for John Armada. So yes, I do still have some left. So, okay, so we have some great music. He was a guest on the show, and we got to hear some of his amazing, amazing, amazing work. Not because he was my guest, but because he's just really good. Anyhow, so yes, I have some CDs left for John Armada. A great, some, some great stuff in here. Some great stuff in here and autograph. So if you want that, make sure you go to the website, go to the bottom, just um, go connect and say you want... You want this CD and it's yours. I also have another one for Chris St. John Flyaway. Let, let me tell you, I love this. I actually, I, ha, I ended up buying two. So one, so I wanted to make sure I had some, I had one. So anyway, but Chris St. John, you gotta get it, gotta get it, gotta get it. He was also on the show. So make sure you go back to entrepreneurlifeshow.com, watch the full interview and how to connect with him. And then I actually got from my latest, which is right here. So I've got Rebecca Doggon Davis, DGD. So two CDs from her. So we've got Ray Bands in the Rain and Hot Doggest Nights, okay? All of her stuff right back here. If you want to check out the interview with her, also go to entrepreneurlifeshow.com, check out the full interview, or just go back and you can look at some of the interviews I did on whatever podcast you're looking for. And actually, I do still have the book, the 
hey Julia, login, revolutionary beauty. Now somebody did want this, but you know what? You forgot to give me your address. So it is still up for grabs because I don't have the address to where to ship it. So you didn't leave me that message. So make sure you go to the bottom of the website. You can also check out the full interview with Julia Loggins by going to entrepreneurlifeshow.com and look for her interview, wherever you listen to. Okay, so who do we have on today? So gotta have up with the best publicist and PR agent because I get the best guests. So I have um, Nick Zavante and Jack J.D. Singer, which are best friends, who have turned their mutual passion with storytelling and is a, I, I, it's hard for me to say this, philosophical conversations um, from college they got together they took their joy for their sci-fi and writing and music and horror and so from their career background they said you know what we're about to make a switch and so now they've got some amazing indie stuff going out there some films and music and we're going to learn all about them and what they do and how they got started so we're going to bring them both on the show and people nick is pretty cute so if we're with the stage, I want you to throw on your keys and all that stuff, okay? So when you stand, he, he, he looks pretty hot. So just thought I'd share that really quick and welcome to the show. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi. How are you? Welcome to the Good show. Good introduction. Man. Thank you. <laughs> so welcome to the show. I'm so happy that you guys were able to be a guest. So it, it's so lovely when I have fun people on the show and fun guests on the show. So I wanted to start off by first saying, so at, if you can just kind of share how you guys met and just coincidentally had the same type of um, interest, especially in film and music and creativity and like how you started collaborating? Great question. Uh, yeah, so, so I, I can talk a little bit, I'll let Jackie kind of chime in, but we actually met in college and I think it was that shared interest in creativity, fiction writing, and as we said in the intro, philosophical conversations. You know, I think our peer group, you know, you know how it is in college, the first semester, I was kind of hanging out. And I think it took us maybe like a few months before we had our first conversation. And then it turned into this all-nighter where we were just talking about everything from movies to fiction to film. And yeah, and then it was like 6 a.m., the song was coming up, and I think that kind of like cemented our friendship. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> I still remember that night. We actually uh, eventually got to a point where we were hungry. I don't even think we went to dinner. And we were trying to find any place that was open. And that's when we realized it was like 3 a.m. And we didn't even know where the night went. <laughs> so I know that from, from what I've learned in trilogy and sci-fi film, and um, it's, that's kind of a really interesting genre, especially in this time. And so, you know, because I was, I did like stop a little bit of what you guys were doing, but I'm going to share in a little bit some of the stuff that you're working on. But why that genre of all? Because there's, there's love stories, there's, you know, there's drama, you know, and you, you actually have a little bit of drama and comedy kind of, you know, intermingled. But why that specific kind of genre in film and writing? Well, the one thing I'll say was, is, is that I, I can't take any credit for the comedy. That, that's all Jack. He's, he's the funny one. No, <laughs> yeah, no, as you can tell, yeah. So our, I think what's interesting, our interests are very different. You know, I, I love dramas. I'm like a drama guy. Jackie's clearly into comedy. But, um, but I don't, to me, I think my favorite artists are the ones who jump genres, right? I feel like, you know, to like make the same movie, if it's a drama or an act of comedy over and over and over, I just I feel like it gets it gets stale. I like to make a comedy and then work on a sci-fi and then a, um, a, a thriller. I love that kind of like the, the palate cleanse mm -hmm. of changing genres. Well, for me, I, I can't say that I like a particular genre. It's I'm all about the story. If it's a good horror story, like intrigue in anything behind like the jump scares, that's my favorite horror movie. If it's comedy, but it has like a heartfelt message behind it, that's my comedy that I like. like I don't pin myself down because it's just what the whole is more important than the sum of its parts. So, so who's the storyteller though? Who's the storyteller? Because I've seen a few snippets of your trailers, and they're um, they're really oddly creative, and uh, so you know, funny, but kind of like I guess 
mysterious, like it, the anticipation of what is supposed to happen next. So where do you get your, um, your content from? Are you just both just creative people or is it from seeing things in everyday life or other mutant, other movies and film? I think we're both incredible storytellers and what makes our partnership so good is that we'll bring what we felt and got influenced by in our day to day mm -hmm. and then the other person does and putting it together makes it twice as good and I might have one initial idea and then he takes it where my brain wouldn't go and vice versa and I think it just becomes a lot more complex. Mm -hmm. I like that Jackie, you know, the uh the idea about us being incredible storytellers, you know, more, feel free to kind of bring it on. <laughs> you no, know, but, but uh, I think what you said to me, I think great partnerships are all about that. I, I said this a million times. It's like one plus one equals three. You know, I think, I think each of us bring a lot to the table, but then it's that coming together. And I think early on, we started with like kind of different interests, you know, like mm -hmm. you said, I, I have this drama sci-fi background. I like music, you know, I, I come at things from, from a different angle. But now I feel like our ideas, it's that case now where like the idea becomes our idea. Like if it comes from Jackie, if it comes from mine, from me, from, from my head. In the end, it's like I lose track of like what was mine, what was hers. It just becomes like our story. Our I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I was so competitive when we first started. Like I had a mental tally of whose idea was whose, and I was losing. Um, <laughs> and now just, after the years of working together now, it's just like, I have no idea where it started, how it got there, and where it ended. And it's... Who would you say is more of the storyteller and who's more of the visionary that sees the vision? I think, to me, you know, I, I read something where they said that the story is, is two, it's, it's like, a, it's a coin with two sides. There's character and there's plot. And in a really great story, I think the plot kind of um, is, 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 is driven by true character character motivations and histories. And I think it's opposite, right? It's like true characters kind of play out the plot in a way that feels natural. So it's, it's very simplistic, but I, I love plots. I love films like Inception, Memento, like I love plot twists and structure, where I think Jackie loves characters and loves making <laughs> sure that they're authentic and real. Yes, I'm all about character motivation. I, my biggest pet peeve is a character who go against who they are to carry the plot forward. So if anything, like in our stories when we're outlining or anything, I feel like, oh, we're just putting them there to make the next scene happen. I'm like, nope, we're stopping and we're finding out why they're doing this. <laughs> so I, I do want to share something. And so I wanted to share a little trailer of one of your film, which is No Retreat. Fine, it's a little intriguing, comical. Um, because even though, like you say, like sci-fi, you wouldn't think is necessarily comical, but actually you have some, you know, it, it is a bit of com comedy in there, a bit quirky, um, and mysterious kind of all <laughs> that, that's, that's my personal opinion all at the same time. So if you don't mind, I want to share with anybody, if you're listening so you can hear, because really without seeing it, it was, um, you get it without actually seeing it. Does, does that make sense without having to actually see it? So if you're watching live, it's great. But it's really um, hearing it. It was like it, I really had a connection with it. If you don't mind, can I? Do you mind if I share a piece of that with the, the trailer? No, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. So for everybody who's listening, sorry you can't see it, but anyway, it's really cute. I love it. Let's add it to the stream. All right, thirty seconds. Give me your best ideas. An archaeologist and a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> Try again. Ballerina and a Baptist. <laughs> but it, what if it's mitzvah? It takes place in a bar mitzvah. <laughs> no. Huh? No, of course you don't. You didn't even notice me. You were sick with the zebra on a t-shirt. Oh. I'm changing this one up. <laughs> it's not your mama's musical. What's the plan for this weekend? I was thinking we would make a movie. Right. This weekend. This weekend's our right. Retreat. Sure. We make a movie that's exactly like life. No script, no actual lines. It's a series of meaningless conversations that we cut before anything interesting happens. Then go ahead. Lacuma, Monet, Cataract. Hey, does the have detached retinas? And we let the audience fill in the gaps. Can you tell me if you're seeing this movie? I'm not. 
So what are we writing? No, that's just it. We're not really going to write anything. Okay. You're a great musician. But if you don't want to do that, you can just do something else. Be a sculptor. Or can I tell you what I love about that? Because it did, it actually made me laugh quite a bit. But it was, also had a little romantic comedy. You know, and so, I mean, it's such a nice mixture of a blend. And I was like, well, it's not even just all like sci-fi or horror, but it has a little bit of everything. What went into this particular one? Because I really, I, I, just that short little piece was extremely entertaining. Well, well the one thing I was going to say was like, like, editing a trailer is a whole other beast. It's a whole other art form. Uh, Our film came out, and then we, um, it was it was in festivals for about a year. We were traveling a bunch, promoting it, screening it, uh, kind of seeing it and seeing how, like, the, uh, the audience reacted to it. And then when it was done, it was time to, like, condense it into this trailer. Yeah. And uh, Jackie and I edit all of our own films, but, but then we're like, oh, now we've got to turn this into a two-and-a-half-minute <laughs> teaser trailer right. for it. And, and we actually learned how to make trailers with that one. And it was, it's, it's a weird, it's a hard, it's a hard job to do. Because you want to put the best parts in, but, and it was, it's, it has a little bit of everything, I would say, into it. I think Nick made it into a mini movie. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what it seems like. So what was the whole, the whole creative process of, you know, just, no, no retreat. Who who did the writing? How did you come up with the concept? And then how do you pick who you're going to have in it? Because of course, you know, if it isn't the right person, the right actor or actress, it doesn't matter what they do. If they can't perform to what your vision is, it's just not going to be successful. So I have to say, it was, it was, it was I like, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the short piece. Um, talking about the, uh, the process of this? Um... Well, I didn't know if you wanted to go into your one location to after. <laughs> I think so, yeah. I think that's more. I'll talk yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, so again, I think, you know, um, I think what's really important for, for indie artists, right, and this is whatever you do, if you're a musician, a writer, a storyteller, I think it's, it's important to, when you're first, when you're creating your first pieces, is to kind of know how to put yourself in a box. Mm -hmm. Right, and 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 the box shouldn't shouldn't limit you. It shouldn't it shouldn't be uninspiring. It should it, it should actually force you to be more creative. Mm -hmm. So I remember um, uh, Jack and I actually took a a writers retreat and we stayed for a week uh, upstate in this house and we just started from the, the first few days were just like whatever like whatever we can dream about is mm -hmm. it sci-fi is it a horror film is it a uh, historical drama you know it's like whatever whatever inspired us we, we talked about. But then, towards towards the end of the of the past of the um, the retreat, the question was, okay, if if you only have X amount of dollars, and if it has to be a one location, five actor thing, something that, that we can do, right? Because it's like you know having a having a, a day job working with indie actors mm -hmm. who also aren't available for a month or two shoot. Mm -hmm. So we started putting on the, the, these limitations, and then very quickly it was like. These are three to four stories that we could do in those limitations, and then this this one rose up just because I think it was also you know we were at that age and in a time in our life where the the challenge of trying to be an artist mm -hmm. and have a life and have a full time job was was really difficult. You know, oh. like yeah. so, and our characters are basically in that same place where it's like uh, Emily is an aspiring novelist and Sean is a aspiring rock star. But, you know, as you get older, it's harder to focus on that dream. So would you say each of you are a piece of the actors in it and what you wrote? I would say it's a, the two are a mixture of us and other artists that we know. It was really just a plight and a story of telling people who are in the same path and that certain part in their life that they're not alone. We're all trying to do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then and then just the way that we always write our stories, it's gotta be a piece of life. It's not just, oh, I have a day job. Oh, I wanna be an artist. Mm -hmm. it's, it's love, it's past relationships, it's, it's life in a complete nutshell. We wanted to bring all of that to No Retreat. 
How difficult would you say it is to, because, okay, you can be creative, you can write, you can have a vision, but then actually th then to put it on film and then to produce it and know what the audience is going to relate to to be able to capture the audience when you're not even actors or actresses. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like you have to, how do you become to say, okay, I know how I need to express it without being an actor and actress yourself. You get what I'm saying? Being able to teach someone how to express it, but put it on the screen. How difficult was it for you, I mean, to learn all of that and piece it together? Was it just trial and error? You know, I think I think I could talk quickly about producing. That was, that that's the hardest thing to do, right? It's easy to, to, to dream of these stories, mm -hmm. to write them, to have these fun writing sessions, but, but producing the film, learning about how to kind of, you know, order craft services, getting yeah. liability insurance, location insurance, shot scheduling, you know, having having to book someone's travel and hotel, that stuff is so not creative. And it actually self-produced it, you know? So, so all that, it was hard to, it was hard to find, find the time to be creative and also to, to solve these logistical nightmares. So I don't recommend anyone <laughs> and edit. Find yourself a producer because, you know, it took us, it was, it was two years of our lives and, <laughs> It was very challenging two years of our lives. Now, from what I read, I believe you guys have other actual writing. You, you've done a lot. You just have not shared them all yet and displayed some of the the what you have on the on the back end. And I want to get into. I know that you're going to be in doing some writing, but um, there is a another short film. I can say the first day, and um, and that seems to be a bit insane to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then watching the actors or the actors, the ones portraying the, the doctors or psychiatrists, whatever you call them. And it was well, so well perfected. It was as if how it was written. And I want to show a piece of that is when you look at their face, it's, um, it's supposed to be serious and insane, but the look on their faces, they're enjoying the taunting. They're enjoying the, that you're, they're driving you insane. Does, does that make any sense? <laughs> You know, but it's um, like this light sarcasm in their face, and you're just like, what? excuse me, like, what assholes? You know what I'm saying? But it's, 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 it's a really good piece. So if I can share that, a little bit of that. Okay, we're going to share another one, you guys. For any of you who are listening that may not be watching live, but this is, it's so much fun. I just, I just wanted to share them because I really enjoy it, so I know other people. Are, they should enjoy it. If they don't, I guess they have a problem. But hold on a second. <laughs> You suffer from reoccurring paramnesia. In a normally functioning brain, the temporal lobe fires when we recall an event. In a person with reoccurring paramnesia, this circuit is overactive or permanently switched on. A new event is being deemed while simultaneously triggering a memory of the same event. A memory that doesn't... Exist. I deja vu. Let me guess. You've heard this before. You become paranoid, violent, dangerous to yourself and all those around you. We recommend solitary confinement indefinitely. <laughs> It's the same. Oh, it's the same. I don't think I'm sick. I don't feel sick. Please help me. What upset you do you think is going on here? I don't know! You can trust us. <laughs> We're here to help us. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! What are you waiting for? the three like doctors or psychiatrists it was just like they were waiting for that moment it, it was like it, that's where i was saying of the 
the anticipation and the filming of, you know, just on the fingers and the ring, you know, there's certain these key points and, uh, um, that was, that was really weird. I'm sorry. A little crazy. So what, so what went into this? Where did this come from? And the, the title, the first day, what relation is that into the film? Yeah, so, so on, on this one, it started off with this very interesting fact that I've never had deja vu ever in my life. And Jackie seems to have it constantly, I think. <laughs> not constantly. I'm not living in... <laughs> not a psychic. But yes, I, I... At least three, four times a year, so... Yeah, and, and so for me, I've never had it, and so I don't know what it's like. So I, I've become obsessed with it. I want to know what it, what, what it is. Is it, is it like... like multiple rea uh, multiple realities bleeding into each other is it memories of a past life is it just like a glitch in your brain mm -hmm. so so oftentimes i start with like a premise of something that i'm interested in like a character has this, this condition chronic deja vu and it'd be interesting if we had a movie that took place in one room and it actually loops over and over and over with slight variations so i kind of wanted the viewer to feel like they actually also have deja vu Mm -hmm. and, and, and I wonder, you know, are they going slightly insane, maybe? So, and uh, basically, and I, I had to help explain what it is to feel it so that it could be taken from someone just watching the film. And I have to say, I, I have to shout out to those actors that played the doctors because, I mean, obviously it was written and produced and directed to make you question them. Yeah, yeah. But some of those yeah. those moments, like that one, that one smile, still gets me. And he's like, "Oh, let me guess, you've heard this before." And that smile is just, I love it every time I see it because it's like you creepy. <laughs> like, and that's the feeling creepy. that so that's the feeling I got is like you made you yourself want to, um, like their their um. I know I said asshole, but it's just like, wow, it's like that, you know, just the, the perfect kind of expressions and bot, you know, expressions and their, their, their body, their body expression just by fingers and just, you know, the eyes they did. They did a good job because that's what I thought. That's how I was saying, you know, I was like, wow, they're enjoying this in a sense. They're supposed to be helping, but you're like, no, are you enjoying it? Or are you really wanting to help them at all? So yeah, I get that. They, it, it worked yeah, out well. And, and one thing I should add, as all five of the actors, uh, Zach, Anar, Nicole, Marcisco, Mario are like the sweetest, nicest people. And <laughs> so yeah, so it, it is interesting just kind of seeing that. And again, I think film is amazing because it captures it captures those gestures. Like yeah. the actor is truly a master of his craft. All it takes mm -hmm. is a certain look in the eye or that smile. And and that shot of Zach, I remember on set we saw that, and we were just oh my god, like that's it, perfect. So I know with you, um, Zach, I mean, from Nick, from our, my research, that so you're a creative director, of course, we talked about a bit, um, Civic Entertainment Group. So and you can share a bit about how that came into fruition because now what you're doing. So was this your thing? You know, at, at some point in time in the end, this is where I want to get into. This is what I want to get involved in. Or did it just so happen because of that career choice that you kind of fell in? To this scene of let me be right and start doing my own movie show filming producing or is that just coincidental was it always a plan no no i i do think it was a master plan i, I kind of like maybe it was like 20 years ago i started to think about all these interests i had you know i was in a band mm -hmm. i loved photography I, i'd written a novel in in college that was it was interesting and exciting but it was just like the most boring process <laughs> sitting in an for nine months with like no exposure to sunlight or friendship. Mm -hmm. And then so I started to kind of, <laughs> so I, I started to think like, you know, how do I turn these these diverse artistic passions into a career? And I started researching and I started looking at a lot of my favorite filmmakers were um, either commercial directors or actually uh, ex copywriters. Mm -hmm. You know, like Ernest Hemingway was a copywriter, um, F. Scott Fitzgerald was a copywriter, Aldous Lips. And I said, oh, what, what is this copywriting thing? So then I started to kind of explore that world and then so for last you know forever now it's like I, I i've been an advertising copywriter which means like you know i concept advertising and marketing campaigns mm -hmm. sometimes i think of experiential ideas sometimes tv spots print ads radio ads you know when when we had radio back in the day 
But it's a it's actually a really amazing job because you know I've said this before. It almost feels like every job is you being a writer director and you're having the vision and then you're pulling the pieces together. If you're working with a vendor, if you're hiring um, a crew to shoot it. So I, I have to admit, I I'm in a place where it's like I love what I do. I have such an interesting, inspiring job, and it actually fuels me for these for these other projects I do. And same thing, the film projects kind of. Or this palate cleanser, you know. If I if I ever get burnt out of work, I can turn to filmmaking, yeah. and then I feel recharged. I know that I want. I know you have some some a new release. It's not all, all the way out yet, um, but the shadow in the shadows. Now, what's interesting from what I read is that apparently, now I, this is a horror film, um, psychological thriller. What I found interesting was that this film is really close to you, Nick, because of some experiences that you've had. And so, um, traumatic experience. So can you share a little bit about how this came fruition, into fruition? Did you know what? I'm gonna make a movie out of it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so I, I think, again, to me, I'm always intrigued by that initial spark of a premise. You know, um, in the first film, it was Deja Vu. In our last film, it was that artistic journey. So in this one, uh, I suffer from this thing called sleep paralysis. I, I've had it since I was 15 years old. I don't have it as much these days, but it's that feeling when you fall asleep and all of a sudden your eyes open and you're in your bed, but you're frozen. You can't yeah. move. And then you start to have these, and it started off just as visions. I would see like Freddy Krueger or Jason like in my doorway, and that was terrifying when I was 15. And then like, and then uh, it slowly gets more and more horrific where you start to hear voices you oftentimes feel like a like um, a pressure on the bed, and then and once I, I even felt like a blade just like in my stomach. It was the most intense, scary thing. But so I had that premise, and then Jackie, like she always does, just like <laughs> dropped the bomb in my initial premise because I had this idea that oh, it was a young kid maybe, but like when I was young, she she exploded the idea, and then I'll I'll let her talk about how it actually came together after her her little bombshell. Uh, well, do you want to explain what sleep paralysis is? <laughs> yeah, so I was gonna ask. So for those, <laughs> well, yeah, well, I just you know, you know what it's called. It's a dream state, yeah. So it's a dream state. You know, it's it's like when you're. I think it's it's when you're trapped between REM sleep and and you're still awake. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the uh, the term for it is called low REM latency, and that's people who drop into REM sleep immediately. The average person it takes like ninety, it's like thirty minutes of deep sleep. And then you go into REM for a bit and you come out. Where other people like me, it's like I can fall asleep and within five minutes I have the most vivid, yeah. mm -hmm. realistic, oftentimes horrific dreams. But, and again, there are different theories. Some people think it's just a sleep disorder. Other people think it's astral projection and, and, um, and, and demons who are, who are who kind, of, kind of come into your mm -hmm. world. So it's still, it's still open to actually what it really is. Um, so, unlike Deja Vu, which Nick is still not had, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure Never. I haven't had Deja Vu. Never. So I've known he's had this affliction, shall we call it, um, since we, we met in college. But then maybe a year and a half ago, I actually experienced it. <laughs> and I immediately freaked out, well, not being able, able to move, which is in the strangest thing and to begin with um but in in my dream i was just like wait no this is what nick says i know what this is okay all right i just have to calm down i'm okay i'm fine i know what this is i know what this is so the, the next morning i like called or texted him and i was just like holy crap how long have you had those it was intense it was horrifying it don't wish it on anybody but when he uh to me about the premise of doing the movie i i tend to blow up he comes up with an idea and i go okay now what if this and i go to the four corners of the world to the universe and go and then he brings me back to it's reality <laughs> you. <laughs> but you need that though right because that helps to really help make the film that you have though that type of reaction and kind of maybe going a little overboard and saying no i know we i know what we can do with this Oh, because what I have, when I work alone, so I've been writing stories since I could put pen to paper. I remember, like, being six and writing short stories and poems and everything else. I don't, 
I'm one of those free-spirited artist type of people, like, oh, I have something on, sit down and write a story. And you kind of come up with a convoluted, not really a true premise to your story. And well, Nick goes, okay, here's the premise. And I go, okay, so you put me in this box. Okay, how much can I move in this box? And I will, like I said, go to the four corners of this box and go, but can we move the boxes a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we did with uh, In the Shadows. It was just like, okay, so this is what the movie is. I'm sure he rolls his eyes when I'm like, but okay, I'm just gonna say this, but what if this happens instead? <laughs> what if we yeah. spend days on um, Another. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think for us, so like a, a key term is what if, right? Because I think, again, I think a lot of people rush into working on a project, and, yeah. and uh, our system is we actually have a premise, and then we spend months, maybe sometimes it's in years, but oftentimes, like, say, two or three months, where we're like, what if this happened? What if that happened? What if this? And and then we, we have a shared document that just explodes with, like, ideas, mm -hmm. characters, and, and then I think only when it's time to, to pull it together, then there's there's this this feeling that like the actual story emerges out of that fodder. You know, it's it's almost like we don't create it. It it, it comes from a higher place, and now we like channel it into mm -hmm. the story. So I know that you do more than just. I mean, because you guys are are extremely diverse, obviously. And so, but aside from you know film and music, that you're also working on a young adult book series and which and we all know that it's this often happened you can take a book and a, a book and turn it into a movie and then a series and turned into film so what was your envision when you thought you know what let's let's get a book let's write a book and then um is that also then mystery and sci-fi and turn that into a, a series or is there a, any intention to fe in the future like you know we could possibly turn this into a movie I would love for it to be a movie, <laughs> but it would be like a big bunch to Lord of the Rings style, you know, actors on uh, location in New Zealand for 30 years, probably, but we'll get there. So who thought about the book though? And why, you know, and young adults? So I think for this one, very similar to our early process in, I remember, <laughs> I remember when I was in college, um, I was taking a few like summer classes and one was, a, uh, it was like a, a, a writing workshop. It was like a fiction writing workshop. And so I was on Long Island, and I remember the class was me and, and uh, eight other Long Islanders, and everyone came with these stories that were like based on their on their real lives. You know, someone had a story about about some car accident, and, and uh, the person read it out loud, mm -hmm. and our teacher was like, "Oh, great story!" And the person was like, "It actually happened to me." And he's like, "No, no, no, no. <laughs> it's supposed to be fiction. It's supposed to be a fictional story." And then someone else had a story about like uh, about like dropping out of college, whatever it is. You know, oh, an interesting story. It actually happened to me. <laughs> so then finally, I was like, I had a story about a thousand years in the future, where where all writing is banned and all books are banned, and and oh, the only wow. remnant of, of knowledge and, and education is a science textbook. And he's like, I love it. It's, 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 it's Exactly, fiction, right? So, so then, so I had that 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 kind of germ. I wrote maybe three to five pages of it for for, for the class assignment, so I could read it out loud. And then I never touched it. And then it's been X amount of years since college. I never touched it. But then Jack and I, we always talked about it. Right? It always it always kind of came up in conversations of like, one day we think about this. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> first novel that he wrote. You said when I was in college, think of college, outside college a little bit. He hated the process. He hated being, like he said, he didn't like, had no life. He was sitting in a dark room writing it. He doesn't like sitting down and writing a novel. I'm not saying I like a dark room and not being around friends, but writing novels, I, that's my thing. Like, I love to do that, you know, got a couple hours, I'll sit down and start writing. So while COVID was going on and lockdowns, yeah. you know, you kind of get a little bored. And I'm just like, can, can I have it? I'll write it. It's a great, great, fantastic <laughs> promise. Give it to me. Because you know me, when I start writing a novel, I just mm -hmm. sit down and go, okay, the night was humid. Like, I, I just start. I don't have any outline. I have no reason where I'm going. I go, at least I know where your story is going. Can I have it? I'll write it. And yeah. then, okay, and then we write it together. 
<laughs> and I said, yeah, I said, well, how about this? How about we spend a few months just what do you think it, having fun, and then what I'd love to do is to is to outline and structure. So I said, why don't you spend, you know, a year, six months, just like having fun with it, and then I'll build a very detailed kind of uh, uh, outline for us, plot points built in, and then if she wants to write it, you know, feel free to have that. Now, me now I think you love it more, and you're gonna want to write it with me. It is true. I am as as, as so, so. The whole thing we do is like every Wednesday night we have like Wednesday work night we call it. So we, we after our day jobs we up on Zoom with a with a drink in hand, and then we, we <laughs> usually talk for three hours, but it turns into five hours of, of conversation. But so for the last I don't know, the last maybe three months it's since January, every single mm -hmm. Wednesday night we uh, we have come together. And slowly are, are, are making progress on that story. Do you think, that, um, I wanted to ask, but I'm from, I'm, you know, I'm a little older, but uh, I'm from the Hitchcock era, Twilight Zone. I miss those types of shows. Um, and really today we don't see a lot of that anymore. I think because you had a lot more creative, to me, there was a lot more creativity in those when it came to sci-fi and horror and just kind of that little weird um, cause you don't find it anymore. And so, um, do you put yourself kind of in that category? I wish they still had that where you can get up and, you know, you, a night you're waiting for the Twilight Zone or on Saturday and you're waiting for, you know, the Hitchcock film because you can continually watch them over and over again. I mean, I have to find the channel because you can watch the same thing over it like Lucy and always miss something. Do you see that there is, um, that that is kind of like if, if, if that were to come back and you can fit into that, I mean, I would love to see those types of shows again. Too. I mean, from what we, we have a lot of great stuff out today, but I mean, those are like the best. Do you the see yourself in that category? Teaching. If you're familiar with them, I don't know. I'm in my fifties. If you're familiar with, with Hitchcock and I, Twilight Zone. I will say that one of those, no matter what I've seen today, that one Twilight Zone where the guy has all the time in the world to read all the books and he, <laughs> His glasses break. Yeah. I don't know what age I first saw that, yeah. but it was, it is always a food. Like, I want the amount of emotion I had for that man in that, what, 10 minute storyline. Like, if we could recreate that today, today, I'd be like, we've done our part. I would love for that kind of stuff to come back. You were probably like six years old when you saw that, hence like your oh. old soul, old soul syndrome. Like she has all these experiences of seeing some like dark stuff and she's like, yeah, I was five. But that, but that says it right there that because it's so, um, that type of creativity and film, and they weren't like movies, you know, there were like these short little stories that were so entertaining, no matter how old you are, you remember those. And so when I was watching, you know, and reading up and looking at some of your trail, it just gave me so much of that, me thinking back, like, you just don't get it anymore. And it reminded me of, you know, what you, the works that you're doing and that you're working on is that there's, there's a lot of great movies today, yes, but a lot of them have that same kind of, I don't know, theme, um, fall in love, lose a girl, get the girl, got a girl, lose a girl, you know, get, yeah, you know. <laughs> You know, yeah. It's a sequel, it's a prequel, yeah. it's, a, it's a side story of a franchise, and, and to me, I actually, I, I actually don't like prequels, because I do, I think, I think that there's a beauty in creating a self-sufficient world, mm -hmm. which lives in, it could be a novel, it could be a book, whatever it is, it, it could be a song, and then, and like, embedded into that story is a proper backstory, and a mm -hmm. sense of, of where it goes, and I think a, a prequel robs you of that, uh, of that imagination, of mm -hmm. wondering, how the person got there. And it's what I found that's very, um, many movies that I can see today, I can always, even TV, you can already know what's going to happen next. And it's just like, okay, come on. I know what's going to happen next. Even though it hasn't happened where I didn't see that in what you're doing in your works. It's like, you're anticipating like, okay, you know, what's going to happen with a twist because you don't know what's going to happen. Do you find that that's missing in a lot of today's films and movies? Because you kind of, you know, a lot of stuff you, you're just waiting for. I know somebody's going to, you're about to get shot. I know that guy's about, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, they gave away the storyline before you got there. You know, you, you get what I'm saying? Well, me and Nick have also discussed a lot that there's no true consequences in movies these days. Like, yeah. 
if the people who, okay, I understand it's a high paying actor. You're not really expecting them to die in it. Like I think that's why Game of Thrones was so huge. Right. Early right. years because they're like, wait, wait, people can actually die and not be on the show anymore. <laughs> and that got people so engaged. Now when you watch a movie, you're like, uh-huh, car off a cliff, he fell into a black hole, got spewed out into a wormhole, into a volcano. He's fine. I'll see him next time. Like, there's no consequence anymore. And, yeah. that, and I don't really, prefer, I don't like movies that are like that. I want to worry about the characters and care about their journey. Not yeah. like, oh, everything will be wrapped up in the end. Be fine. I like a sense, to me, I love a sense of, like, when, when serious consequences happen, someone dies or, you know, something is, like, uh, changed forever. I love finishing a movie and feeling that sadness. Mm-hmm. Like, and even if just, it was the act one, whatever happened in that class, like, I missed that, I missed that feeling of the, of the way things were. And then, and then I could watch it again to, to, to relive those, those early happy days. And then mm-hmm. I go through that same experience. If you rob me of that, if you have the person coming back, I, you know, I think a lot of, I won't say movies, but a lot of, like, these sequels and prequels like almost kind of taint the original film for me because yeah. I want to go through that that pain of losing someone, that feeling sadness about the time passing. You know? Because in reality, right, that's our lives. You know, things are going to change. You know, people pass away. You know, jobs come and go, relationships end, and there's something powerful about having that moment live in the past. If you know, and and if both of you could answer this question. Um, if um what do you think makes um makes a good quality creative film um or in in directing like let's see as we're talking about like today things have have changed and so people aren't as creative they might be creative with how somebody died because they blew up in a barrel or you know something i mean and and, and the stunt part of it like wow that's an amazing stunt but it takes away from the art you know, do you think film make the, the art is lost and what, what what quality do you think it takes to what type of quality of a person um, when writing? Let's start. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question. And again, it's like I I feel like and I think, you know, uh, I feel shared about this, that like I think art wants to be something it, 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 it wants to inform itself. Yeah. Right, you know, like if you know about like like so Plato had the idea. But remember, there's like the, the, the world of ideas. Mm-hmm. You know, William Blake talked about the ether. Right, there's this thing that like ideas come out of that space. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I think I think the great artists channel ideas. They, they don't they don't create. If you force a message, then then it's propaganda mm-hmm. or it's 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 artifice. Right, it's not it's not real. It's not reality. And and too often I see characters doing things that they should never do. It's like, I, I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. I, want to yeah. that. I don't believe you. Because it's like, I can tell the writers, it's like a puppet, is making this character yeah. do something. And to me, I, I think you can tell when a, a work, it comes from a pure intention, as mm-hmm. opposed to forcing a message on someone. And, and, and Jeff, oh I don't my know. God. See, and, and I'm not even an actor or a filmmaker, but I'm one that I'm into, um, I, it seems like uh, nowadays more people are looking at the the dollar film, the actor to bring the people, but then you see a lot more people, or you know, bring the the tickets, you know, to sell the tickets, but it loses its creativity, it loses its art, and then um, so you sold a lot, and you may be number one because you sold a lot, but it doesn't mean it's the greatest or most interesting film, I guess you would say, or the most interesting work. And for me, when I watch, I guess because I'm, you know, old school, if the actor can't sell it and they have to sell it with the, and I always, I don't know if this makes sense. It's like, I can see in their eyes, I'm not interested. You could be a really great actor or interest or, or, you know, actor or actress, but sometimes what you're, the, the part you're playing, it just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. And you could be one of the greatest performers there are. It just, I think a lot of. A lot of writers are, um, they're giving up their art form for the dollar or the ticket or the publicity. I don't know if that makes sense um, for the notoriety. Do you, in some sense, agree with that rather than just, to, if, you're, if you're an artist, if you really want to get your message and be true to your film, you're willing to let that go? 
I don't know if there's a lot of movies coming out that actors can even pick that have that message. Like you're saying that like the Twilight Zone and Hitchcocks are gone. Like I don't even know if they have vehicles to do that. Because I mean, I remember we used to hear all the time like, oh, I read the script and I had to play that part. I was so intrigued by the character. I want to live his life in that. Mm-hmm. I personally don't hear that from actors anymore. It's like, yeah. okay, yes, now I'm a superhero that does this. And I think... And yes, it makes tons of money, but I can't believe that we're alone here. Mm-hmm. There's got to be people who want the story. Like, my favorite thing is the character. I want to believe that at the end of the film, they go off in their life and I can imagine, was it, does it keep going? Is it good? Is it bad? Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't tell you the last time, and I used to do this all the time when I watch movies, I want to talk about it for the next hour. Me and my friends, go <laughs> and then and argue like, with somebody with their opinion. <laughs> yeah, and we'd be like talking about, oh, but when this happened, do you think it's almost yeah. like a jury box where we're like fighting yeah. with each other? Oh, no, I think this is what happened. I haven't gone to a movie and had that, yeah. let's talk about it for an hour and a half yeah. conversation anymore. It's like, okay, so when's the next one coming out? Yeah, and then, and then you're mad if it ends in a way and you're like, what the hell? So what happened? Yeah. You know, so yeah, I get what you're saying. It's lost a lot of that, you know, it has. Yes. The, um, if you both separately could choose, um, because you, you, um, you both write and so creative in what you want to portray, living or dead, alive or past, if there's anyone that you could write for and have in a film, but it would have to be, it would be horror horror film, horror mixed with sci-fi, um, who would you entertain and say, this is who I would love to write for and have in one of my films? I'd have to think about that one. I'll say, I'll say the, uh, the, uh, the easy answer. So our, our, our current horror film, you know, again, it's like a pretty kind of boxed in location. It's all going to be this one house. And then we have like these, these, these neighbors who are a little older couple. And, uh, and one of our favorite movies is Poltergeist, right? It's such a classic horror film. Right, Again, just right, before right, right. It, it was all about jump scares, but, but it does have a good mix of that. And so our our dream casting for for our side character, Small World, would be Craig T. Nelson and oh. what's, what's the uh, the wife the wife's name? Uh, Mary Jo Williams. Mary Jo Williams, right? So the thing is, so. So, so audiences who know Poltergeist and love Poltergeist mm-hmm. can have this extra little little charming surprise seeing the, those two classic uh, horror film stars. Because I will say, Poltergeist, I, I put aside the third film. The first two, I lived on that, and I love... I mean, the fact that that horror movie was really more about family. That's where I yeah. go. I'm not a genre person. That's my favorite film because it was about yeah. family. You know, again, don't get that much anymore you, like, you it don't still about life. it was like this yeah. stuff's happening to them okay it's not in our reality hopefully the ghosts will get to that part of me um but it was done so well of course it was like Spielberg and all that but there, there needs to be more behind it which like what you were saying like the movies that are coming out like I hate to keep I, I do like uh, the Marvel universe but you know you're getting a a movie you're not getting anything other than that mm-hmm. yeah. where, where I'm saying culture guys you get family to that you have a family on the ropes kind of a story mm-hmm. behind it mm-hmm. so yes we would love to bring them back to pay homage to <laughs> you guys know more like that's the horror we want to bring back <laughs> have you thought of acting in any of them yourself me never <laughs> I being on camera I don't think I don't think I have the, the timing for it, you know. Jackie, on the other hand, she's just so quick and deep, and so, so our conversations are all are, are often like me trying to be like profound and trying to like uh-huh. say these things, and she just like cuts in with this one liner, and then I'm, I'm laughing and I can't figure out you know how to, how to segue out of it. But yeah, I, just, I don't have that timing. I did do acting uh, in high school. <laughs> I, and everyone tells me to do improv and stand up and everything else, but yeah, if, if I could have a small comedic role in one of our films, I would do that. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't realize. 
Well, now yeah. you know something new. Now you know. Now you start. So, what do you have upcoming? Because I know that you have some stuff still behind the belt that you thought that you haven't even come out with yet. Are you just holding on to that and just to that creativity process? Say, I'm going to come out with this, or are there other projects that you have in the works right now? Because you have some. I mean, so you guys are have um, done really well in the um, in the indie sector, really well, which is you know I'm sure is very exciting because it's your creativity your art is not mimicking somebody else's or doing what other people have done it's it's like you kind of set yourself apart so that has to be really exciting do you have upcoming stuff that you're working on now i think we have this like back trove of, of ideas right this, this this backlog of ideas and again some of them are there so there is this one um uh, young adult trilogy that we're currently mm -hmm. working on. There's our horror film that where it's all outlined and ready to go, written. So we're just in, in a stage where we're chatting with production designers, mm -hmm. crew, actors, and the whole casting process, which is a blast. And then and then we have, we just have a million, we have this long document of like ideas for TV shows, web oh. content, uh, plays. I don't think plays are on the list, but everything else but that. Not to say that I guess you won't go there. <laughs> no, we're creating play for. Well, I know we are running close to the end of time, and this was a, a really, really, really great interview because this is the first time I've ever had anyone like yourself um, on the show who's actually done writing and so involved in it. Um, I've never had anybody with, um, I don't think anybody really in movie and film. I think I've had a critic and also um, someone who is behind the scenes and helping actors. So this was really, really, really enlightening for me. And I wanna make sure that people do always find you and connect with you, although you guys can watch, you know, the full podcast or listen or watch it live on entrepreneurlifeshow.com. But for people who are interested in following and what you're doing, how can they get a hold of you to do that? So I'm, I'm actually blessed with a, a very unique name. There are no other Nick Sapontes in the universe. I, I don't ever see them. So I, I'm the easiest to find on Instagram, you know, at Nick Sapante, Facebook, mm -hmm. YouTube, Twitter. I'm, I'm across, I'm on all social media uh, with Nick Sapante, also website, NickSapante.com. I share a lot of our content. I'm more of the, uh, the uh, promoter <laughs> than, than Jackie is. I share a ton of content, and then easy to find us on, on Amazon, we have two films, our feature film and our short film. So if you, if you just search for, uh, I think on Amazon, I'm Nicholas Sapante. I'm, I'm a little more formal in my, in my <laughs> So if you search Amazon for us, you'll find uh, links to our films. And for me, I do have JackieSinger.com, uh, and there are a lot of Jack, Jackie, Jacqueline <laughs> Singer. You will get everyone who's ever made an album in their life before you find me. But I do have JackieSinger.com, uh, and all my social media is from the about page, if you will. <laughs> Well, thank yeah, you so I much. Need a Gmail. That's JackieSinger.com. Thank you very much for being a part of my show today. You made it very entertaining, and I'm hoping that my listeners thought it was just as entertaining and will end up downloading the show also with many, many others to come. So for everybody who has been listening on the podcast, and I just want to say thanks for you guys who've been giving me the little thumbs up while they're on the podcast. I see you, even though I can't really chat with you. Sorry, because I'm on the live. Um, but thank you for the thumbs up. And for those who want to watch the full interview, make sure if you're listening, go to the website entrepreneurlifeshow.com. And that way, if you've missed how you can follow them, you get a hold of them, you just listen or just go or the podcast and download it and re-listen to it again. Um, and you can check out all of the upcoming guests that are coming up in the next weeks for my next interviews. So thank you, everybody, again, for tuning in and watching. And until next Thursday. Bye, everybody, for now. Have a great week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>